Welcome to Word of Life Ministry, where our motto is let the Word of God become alive in you. Led by a humble servant, Pastor Eugene Fondren. What do unity has to do with all in do? The all that ran down started where? At the highest point of Aaron's being. It's talking about the flow of unity. The flow of unity starts from the top. It's from the People don't know their place. So it creates an environment that's not unity. Join us today as Pastor Eugene Fungin take us on another exciting journey in the Word by the power of the Holy Ghost.
I gave, he starts off with a question. And the question is, what are you willing to trade for Christ? Some people will be shocked and surprised what people will trade Christ for. Amen. Understand that our love should be hidden deep down in our hearts so nothing can come between our love for Christ. Amen. Our minds are not the battleground. Our heart is the battleground. And as one brought out in Sunday school, so good and so plain, that everything is connected to our heart. Our heart is a major organ in our body that pumps blood to everything that's in our body. The battle is not in the mind, the battle is in the heart because the heart has the potential to control the mind. It can control it through what? The emotions. Everything is attached to it. That's why we cry, because everything is attached to our heart. Oh, we got some people in here but that have been heartbroken by companions. Somebody act like I don't know what I'm talking about. And they begin to cry, begin to feel sad, and some begin to get depressed, and some want to take their own life. Why? Because their heart was attached to that person. And they begin to control their mind to the point that they want to bring harm on themselves. Somebody think I'm in, I'm in the house. I know what I'm talking about. I brought a man with me. And God asked the question, what are you willing to give up for Christ? What the got in that you didn't guard your heart now that it begins to sit around like an egg? That yolk, that yellow part of the egg is in the very center. And the shell begins to surround it and protect it. Y'all may hear it, man. Something that got in and now you begin to protect what that got in. And now your mind that calls everything, your emotions, your body, your feelings, and everything to protect that what then got in. And because it got in, God is saying, that was in, they're willing to trade. And at that point, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. I'm protecting it with the shell. I'm protecting it with my heart. And nothing else matters. So when the word comes, when prophecy comes, when everything comes, nothing else matters. Romans 8 and 35. What do it say? Who shall Hold a minute. Us? Everybody said who? who? It is ironic that this passage starts with who, but it don't clarify a person or an individual that precedes it. Give them in the house. Uh-huh. But it starts off with everybody said who? who? Because it knows that the first thing that we have to watch is the, a person getting into our heart. That's the first thing we have to watch. As your neighbor, did anybody get in your heart? It starts off by who? But none of the things that precede it talks about an individual. Shall separate us from the love of Christ. Uh huh. Now hold a minute. Hold a minute. Everybody says separate. Separate. Separate is to place room in between. Now that I have got a relationship with God, uh-huh. and now me and God are just almost just we just like one. Yeah. We just got a tight relationship, yeah. but something came yeah. in between. Yeah. 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 All I can do is listen. The, the, the Bible speaks for itself, yes, it and when we allow something to infiltrate between and pry between. Do you know when you pry something, that means it separates? Yes, it and the more you pry, the farther it separates. Right. <laughs> Listen to what it said. It says, who shall separate us, what? From the love of Christ. From the love of Christ. Our love in Christ, we're together. Shall tribulation? Hold a minute. We talked about in Sunday school how Jesus had fasted for 40 days. And he was at home. You see, Satan didn't approach him on his 20th day. Neither did he approach him on his 25th day. He waited till the 40th day or the 41st day and he approached him. He waited good enough that he saw that he was weak enough to try to tempt him. Sometimes, the way the devil works, he calls, tell you that he causes causes. tribulation. 
Because he feels as though he can beat us down enough. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You see, after the first or second day of being beat up, there still might be some fight left in you. So the devil waits. He causes tribulation to take place. Uh huh. Read. Or distress. He causes distress to take place. Uh huh. Or persecution. He causes persecution to take place. Go ahead. Or famine. And you know what? Somebody said lack of. Lack of. Our people. This is where we fit. This is where most of our attack is. And because of lack of. The devil causes us to get mad at God. Instead of to draw closer to God. Famine. Uh Uh-huh. Or nakedness. Mm. Or peril. You know what? Peril is is when your life is on the line. Oh, there have been times where people have pulled guns on people and said, Look, either you denounce Christ or I'm going to kill you. That's peril. That's what that is. Are you going to separate your love when times get dangerous like that. Oh, it's coming. Read what's that? Or sword. Or sword. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. So you better get used to it. We are accounted as Hold sheep it. for the slaughter. So you better get used to it. What God is saying, what are you willing to trade for Christ? Book of Genesis, the 25th chapter. There were two brothers. One was named Esau, and the other was... Jacob. The parents, one loved one, and the other loved the other one. And and, and when we look at this this story, you got to understand something here that when we're dealing with birthrights, there are certain privileges, and we're going to talk about that a little later on, but there are certain privileges that you have in the custom as being the oldest one. And when you don't understand your privileges, then you begin to take your birthright lightly. Genesis 25 and 27, what it said? And the boy grew. Uh Uh-huh. Esau was a cunning hunter. So this man was a good hunter, y'all. A man of the field. He know how to go in the field and bring back that animal, that that big game. Are y'all hearing me? What does that read? And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And the other one just was a plain guy. Uh huh. Read. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. Y'all know that that's that's like deer meat, like meat. Hey, and, and Isaac liked that. Bob. He go out there and get that meat. Know how to prepare it. Know how to fix it and bring it back to him. But Rebecca loved Jacob. But Rebecca favored Jacob. But Jacob was the young. Esau was the older. Esau had the birthright. Some of us have been given anointing by God. And God has anointed us with special abilities. You know why? See, the birthright was, everybody said, firstborn. But the special anointing came from when we were born again. That's right. That's right. And since we was given this special ability, because we were born again, it's special anointed. Yeah. We don't realize. Man. Yeah. But the devil realized it. That's right. That's right. Jacob sighed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. Who? Oh. All kind of stuff going on in the pot. Good food. Everybody said this time. This, this time. time. See, this time he came out of the field with no game. Everybody said fine. Amen. Don't let it. At that point, he was in hunger. And he began to weigh up the option. Is this birthright any good to me now? And Esau said to Jacob, uh-huh. Feed me. I feed feed me. With the same red pottage. Uh-huh. For I am faint. Therefore, oh. his name is oh. Edom. Oh, let's back it up a little bit. Start the 29th verse back over. And Jacob sighed pottage. Uh-huh. And Esau came from the field. King, everybody said, field. Field. Hold your spot there. Matthew, the 13th chapter, the 38th verse. Everybody said, field again. Field. 
because y'all are getting ready to get this. What God is saying spiritually. The field is the world. Hey! He said that he came out of the field and he was faint. Faint is weary. This world, which is the field, will cause you to be weary. He came out of the field. He was a cunning hunter, but he couldn't find no game in the field. Listen, God says to us, I've seen you as sheep in the midst of what? Where are the wolves at? And when you're and when you're in this world and all the wolves are coming around you, sometimes you get weary. That's right. Amen. And God is saying, Are you gonna let that? See the devil know how to send people your way. <laughs> the devil will try to send things our way to cause us to be weary. Because if he can get us to be weary, he can cause us to faint. And when he tries to break us, he begins to separate us. Right. What are the 31st? So let's go back to Genesis 25 and 30. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me. I Feed me. With the same red pottage. Uh -huh. For I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Yes. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. Oh, it seems as though that Jacob knew the importance of the birthright. He was up against a choice. And the choice was, is a willing to trade. A birthright. Pottage. Our flesh craves for things. Yes, it does. And some things our flesh wants to be pleased and want to satisfy just for the moment. That's right. Amen. But some things in that moment you can't get back. That's right. Amen. That was a moment in time that Esau couldn't get back. Uh -huh. Just to satisfy the urge of the flesh. Uh -huh. Because some things we wrestle with our mind because the flesh is pulling our mind to different places. And if our heart is not guarded. That's right. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Sell me this day. Man, this pot is tastes good. I know you're hungry. See, one thing about our body, our body, do you know, when we begin to look at things, our body begins to prepare over that what we look at. That's right. Oh, you didn't say that's that's right. Right. I know you're right. That's good. That's good. And we'll be just like Esau. We have been born again. Yes. And we're willing yes. to trade this born again life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all ain't hearing me. When a person don't understand what they got. And the devil know what they got. Then the devil's task is to keep you blind in what you have. That's right. Yes, that's right. That's right. And cause situations to take place. All because we don't realize what we got. That's right. You don't realize the power and authority that you have. That's right. And you're willing to trade it all for what? That's, that was the question. What are you willing to trade for Christ? We need to start guarding everything in our heart. God got to be first place. And if any time you see God becoming second place, my God, you need to, everybody see me to cut it off. He said, so, so he said, what prophet shall this birthright do to me now? What prophet is? I'm homeless. I'm starving. And I'm about to faint. What did the 33rd verse say? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swear unto him. Uh -huh. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Now hold a minute. Everybody said, Esau, Esau had to live. The rest of his days under privilege. Matthew 13, chapter 44, verse. How precious Christ should be to us 
This is what it's saying right here. Read what it says. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure it's in like, a field. Everybody said treasure. treasure. And what was the treasure? Everybody said he is in the field. Listen, understand that this treasure, when we find Christ, it's just like we found the treasure. Yes. Amen. And when we found this treasure, man, we hide it. Yes. And that's what God is saying. That's how we should do Him. When He comes into our lives, we should guard this thing, protect it, hide it in the heart. Don't let nothing else to get in there to separate it. That's right, man. Man. Don't let nothing come in and take it. Amen. So He hides it in the field. Uh -huh. The which, when a man hath found, he hid it. And for joy thereof, go up and sell all that he has oh, and buy that. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. are y'all getting this? Yeah. Everybody said for joy. For joy. Now they're happy that the word came. Uh -huh. They happy to receive the word and put the word in their heart. And you know what it did? Everybody said they sold out. Why are we living with these 2017 Christians that haven't ever said sold out? Please, please, please. Please. That's right. They call themselves joy to have the word, but not sold out. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Is this the book? Yeah. Y'all y'all heard the message about forces. And how forces were, and how the forces was attracted to yeah. Satan was attracted to the serpent because of the cunning and the crafty ways. Yeah. Right, right. Listen, understand that there are some that give their lives to Christ but keep the cunning ways. That's right. Not sold out. <laughs> and since they're not sold out, that still force there attracts right. itself to that not right. being sold out. That's right. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> And because they're not sold out, that spirit is attract and attaches itself to them and calls them to do all kind of crazy That's stuff. That's right. Amen. That's it right there. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. You're looking. You're looking. Listen. How many people that you run into is really looking for the truth? That's right. There's a lot of merchant men out there. A lot of people that are really looking for the truth. They're really looking for it. Read what's that. And who, when he had found one pearl of great price. Huh? Y'all get that? He's looking. I've been searching for the truth. And now I've been found. What happened to Read. Who, when he had found one pearl of great price, uh -huh. went and sold all that he had Wait. and brought it. Wait! <laughs> <laughs> look at all this! So you know the time to what? That's right. <laughs> See, I found out that people are looking for the truth, but they're not willing to sell out. That's right. That's right. That's right. They're looking for it. You got to understand, God has imparted His Spirit in many of us in this house. Amen. We've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. You've been given that birthright. Mm -hmm. You've been given them special privileges yes. to use His name. Yes. And power comes through His yes. name. Yes. Yes. Hebrews 6 and 4. What does it say? For it is impossible, impossible for those who were once enlightened. Hey! Everybody say impossible. Impossible. Why is it saying it's impossible? The other verse is dealing with going into repentance. Man. And repenting. But this verse says it's impossible. Why is it impossible? Because I was enlightened. My God, my God. I see it. I see it. I see the traps of the enemy. I see what's going on. And by me seeing it, it makes it impossible for me to see it. I don't have to repent because it's impossible because I see it. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. Oh! And were made. Oh! Listen. 
that was tasted of the everybody say heavenly gift. Heavenly gift. Tell your neighbor that's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. Oh, it's, it's too much. We pull. <laughs> we done tasted. See, listen, we done tasted what heaven is about before we even got there. That's right. Wow. That's right. That's it. Lord have mercy. Oh, Lord. Yes, we have. And since we done tasted, it's impossible. Man, when I taste something that tastes good, I want it. Yeah. And we're made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. And was tasted of the good word of God. Oh. And the power. Oh. <laughs> Everybody say good word of God. Good word of God. I hope y'all eating today. Word of God. This is the good word of God. And we're tasting it. It says it's impossible. Because we're tasting the good word of God. See, I, I, listen, I understand. I understand why a lot of people don't understand now because they're not eating right. from the table of the word. That's right. Mm. That's right. Praise God. But the scripture said the good word. That's good. Hold a minute. Say it again. If there's a good, there's a good So some people are eating something that's bad. That's right. Amen. My God, my God. And that bad food tells you it's okay to eat junk food. It's okay to keep that and not let it go. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Six and six, what is that? Six. Yeah. If they fall away. Yeah. Okay, everybody say yeah. Radio broadcast. Our service time is as follows: Wednesday Bible study 7 o'clock p.m. Sunday school is at 9:30 a.m. Worship service is at 11 o'clock a.m. The church address is 343 Petlerfield Road, Taylor, Mississippi. We'd love to see you there.